our region has suffered for so long. Hosting the World Cup will give hope to the youth across the region and making the lasting contribution to the world. The impact of sp such sport event is not limited to fun, but goes far beyond that, to achieve mutual understanding between different cultures and different backgrounds. The people of Qatar and the region are excited to showcase our hospitality and the ancient culture of the Arab world. The Qatar 2022 FIFA World Cup is a journey of hard work, determination, and tireless effort. I'm looking forward to welcoming you all in Qatar later this year. I wish the best for all teams participating. And uh, we have one of the best goalkeepers in the world, Mendy here, and he's gonna be. <laughs> He's going to be uh, playing against my national team. So I spoke to him early. I told him that, you know, I hope he's not going to be in the best shape during that game. <laughs> Thank you very much. All the best. Thank you, His Highness, and uh, it's such a great honor to have you with us, and thank you for those uh, encouraging words. We, we had a brief discussion earlier, and uh, Mandy, who is uh, one of the best goalkeepers, said he's going to play very hard, but of course we want Qatar to proceed and do well. President Kagame, so wonderful to see you, so good to see you. And also a special thanks to uh, Klaus and the World Economic Forum for providing this platform. Th this is a, a relaxed, easy session, and uh, we're going to keep it as informal as possible. The, the approximately November, December this year, five billion people worldwide will be watching the Qatar FIFA World Cup 2022. It's, it's a great privilege and a great honor for not only for the Middle East, but I can tell you for the developing world and, and for football all over the world that uh, the World Cup is coming to Qatar. We cannot think of a better place or a better personification. His Highness, uh, you spoke about trust and uh, you have built under your visionary leadership so much compassion, so much love for people not only in the region but worldwide and, and we are immensely grateful and this is going to be the best FIFA World Cup ever. We've got no doubt about that. The other issue is that football has shown us over many years in a very unique way that it brings people together from different language groups, different races, different religious backgrounds. It, it has served as a unifying force. I was in Nigeria last week to hand over the Confederations Cup and uh, the leadership there, both in football and in uh, uh, in government was saying when the national team of Nigeria plays all of the ethnic backgrounds becomes one united Nigerian come together all of the religious backgrounds unite because in those 90 minutes the Nigerian national team represents the best of Nigeria. I've heard the same being said in Cote d'Ivoire, and I've heard the same in many parts of the world. We also know that when, uh, if you talk about a different sport, when Pakistan and India play cricket, for that time, we've been told over and over again, that the soldiers on both sides both Pakistan and India stop and, and they watch cricket. 
they were sport. So sport brings people together. And of course, uh, football is unique and, and has played the greatest role in uniting people across the board. So we're going to start. And one of the things we're going to do is to also recognize the, the fundamental contribution of football to the socio-economic upliftment. I mean, every time I'm in Qatar, I see thousands of people from all over the world having the privilege and the excitement of employment and taking money home uh, with the building of the stadiums, the building of the hotels, the, the, the benefits and the impacts of the World Cup in Qatar far surpasses the huge infrastructure that's taking place in Qatar, but it has huge benefits for our people in the Middle East as well as worldwide. So uh, we are now going to start with uh, the president. I mean, there's a whole, we've got a world-class team here, and uh, I don't need to take too much time introducing them, except to say that we have uh, uh, the president of, of uh, FIFA, the president of football worldwide, Gianni Infantino. I mean, you've done exceptional work since you've taken over to focus on making sure that, that the respect, the ethics, the credibility in, in football all over the world, as well as in FIFA, is, is uh, reinstated. And you've done excellent work. Keep up that work. Ronaldo, who's called the phenomenon, has won the World Cup twice and scored a huge amount of goals during all World Cups. And one of the exciting things is football inspires young boys and girls all over the world, not only to become like Ronaldo, like Mendy, but also to use the success and the inspiration of those football stars to pursue their talents, whether it's to become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, but it's the inspiration from football players like yourself, Ronaldo, and others is, is exceptional. And then, of course, we've got one of the most successful women coaches in the world who's won the World Cup twice. Uh, America is doing very, very well. I'm told that at some stage, the men will become as good as the women, but you know, the women are uh, leaps and bounds ahead, and we wish the men all of the best, and we're very proud of Jill Ellis and the work she does. And of course, uh, you can clap hands for it, it's fine. Okay. And then uh, uh, Hassan Al-Tawadi, wonderful work in being the spokesperson, very eloquent, very inspiring, and the good work that you've done as the leader of the local organizing committee. We're very proud, and you've done good work. And we're going to be, Qatar is going to show the world uh, not only the beauty of the heart of the Qatar people, but also the power of football to unite people from different backgrounds, different continents, because the world needs unity. Edward Mendy, I had to give him the, the gold medal for being champions of Africa and uh, made us so proud. He's the, currently the best goalkeeper in the world and uh, inspires hundreds of millions of young people. Of course, many of them from Africa, but worldwide. And I did comment and say, of course, you know, as the president of Africa, I want him to do well, but, uh, and we want all African teams and all teams to do well, well throughout the world. We also want Qatar to keep on uh, doing well. So, uh, you know, follow the rules and everything, and uh, I wish you all of the best. <laughs> Arsene Wenger, uh, I don't need to say much of, about Arsene, brilliant football brain, but also an incredible person and uh, his commitment to football development and the role he plays in FIFA is outstanding. I'm gonna start with you, Gianni. You are, you are the president of FIFA, and FIFA is the biggest and the most influential sport organization in the world. And uh, part of the issues today is to talk about football as a force for good. Football as a force for good the immense positive contributions of football. And, uh, and as I said earlier, the unique role of football to, to unite people, different languages, different cultures, different races, and, and, and encourage young people. Tell us about uh, how you see 
the, the Football World Cup, the Qatar uh, showcasing of the best and the highest level of competition of football in the world. Well, thanks, uh, thanks, Patrice, and, and let me first of all uh, thank as well uh, Professor Schwab for uh, allowing, uh, for having FIFA and uh, the world of football here at the World Economic Forum. It is a great honor for uh, our 211 member countries, more than the United Nations, our over 300 million of active players and billions of uh, football fans all over the world to be represented here at this uh, very prestigious stage. Um, well, you know, Mandela was saying that sport can change the world, that it can inspire, that it unites, and definitely he was, he was right with that. And football, as the most popular sport in the world, has a unique reach. The last World Cup was uh, watched by 4 billion people, the last Women's World Cup by 1.2 billion people. This World Cup in Qatar will be watched by 5 billion people, way above half of the world population. And um, all these people who follow and pursue the same passion, um, they all feel in the same way, and they all know that football has this uniting force. And there are many examples in history. We speak about the World Cup. Let's look a little bit back. 2002, Japan and, and uh, Korea together jointly organizing the first World Cup in Asia. In 2006, a united Germany as well, welcoming the worlds, as they were saying, amongst friends. This was their slogan. Uh, well, South Africa, 2010, united the whole of Africa in pride of organizing such... Uh, uh, an incredible event. The World Cup in a few months in, in Qatar, the first World Cup in the Arab world, will be the best, best World Cup ever, uniting the Arab world, but uniting as well the entire world in the Arab world, which is so important, and His Highness, the Emir mentioned it earlier, it's so important in these particular times. And even if we look forward, a couple of years ago, when there were discussions about building a wall between Mexico and the United States, well, Mexico and the United States together, and together with Canada, decided to work jointly to put a bid to organize jointly the World Cup. This is only football can do it, and football can do much more. I would just like to mention um, gender equality, empowerment of uh, women and the role of football in this respect, which is, which is uh, quite unique, thanks to the perseverance that was mentioned earlier as well, we managed to obtain, for example, that uh, women in Iran can go and attend football games. This was not the case for 40 years. Now, will this change anything? Well, maybe, maybe not, but many, many women in Iran are happy about that. In Sudan, in Saudi Arabia, there are women league, there are women national team now playing football. Um, as well as well as I see Sheikh Mohammed here, uh, thanks to the help of Qatar, we have been able uh, to, or they have been able, and we have contributed a little bit to evacuate many people from Afghanistan, including a lot of women who were playing football in Afghanistan. And these kind of messages are, are incredible. And you said it, football unites when the national team is playing, and we'll see it at the World Cup, the whole country is behind that national team. I always remember uh, George Weah, one of the best players in the world, who now is the head of state of Liberia, saying that when they were playing with the national team of Liberia and there was war, uh, you know, the, the war would even stop and people would unite behind the colors of the national team. Football is definitely a force for good. Thank you so much, Gianni. Uh, OK, if you are just joining us, that was FIFA boss uh, Gianni Infantino uh, speaking there at the World Economic Forum in Davos, uh, hosting a panel there of uh, some top uh, sports uh, talents involved in the FIFA World Cup that is coming up in Qatar later this year. We're joined now by our sports presenter, Andy Richardson. He's here with me in the studio. Andy, uh, so clearly the message uh, from that panel there is that uh, 
sport is a unifying force. Football in particular is a unifying force. And in, in this time of uh, political insecurity, the troubles we're seeing in the world, sports can bring people together. I think there's a really valid point to be made there about um, the impact this tournament will have post-COVID-19 and the coronavirus. We've seen so many major sporting events in the last couple of years be played behind uh, closed doors or with limited... Um, limited numbers of fans. And I think, you know, this World Cup will hopefully be the first big tournament in two or three years where a huge number of fans from different countries will be able to congregate and, and unify together. Obviously, there are limits to, to sports power as a unifying force. Let's not forget that although Mr Infantino there, the president of FIFA, listed uh, some, of the, some of the positives that have come from previous World Cups, the last World Cup in 2018 uh, was in Russia. And, you know, countries do also use sport as a means to, to project the best possible image of that country uh, to the world. It's, it's a good way of doing that. We, we heard earlier um, from the World Economic Forum, and, and let's just think of the name. This is a, much more than just a sporting event, the World Cup. We've got uh, people at the World Economic Forum discussing it. Uh, the Emir of Qatar w was talking, talking earlier, and he did say uh, that he feels both the bid, which uh, was successful in 2010, and, and, and the region generally for decades has faced a lot of unfair discrimination and, and clear bias, as, as they would see it, uh, from certain sections of the media ever since uh, this bid was won, that perhaps there's this conception that the Middle East, that Qatar, doesn't have the right uh, to host a World Cup. And what, what he's hoping, and what I think most of the organisers and people who live here in Qatar are hoping, is that if people do come to Qatar, do enjoy this World Cup, that some of those preconceptions mm. about Qatar will be broken down and that there will be tangible legacies, uh, maybe the advancement of, of workers' rights that have been accelerated by the spotlight that's been shone in this country and they've been accelerated because of uh, some of the, the media coverage around the world, that that will be a meaningful legacy once, once the football is finished. Yeah, it was a very interesting speech uh, by the Emir earlier where he talked about uh, Qatar's not perfect. No country is perfect, in fact. And the main thing is they are learning from their mistakes and changing with it. Um, Andy Richardson, our sports presenter here in the studio, thank you so much.